Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at the third and final use of adjectives in New Testament Greek, the substantive use of the adjectives. We've used, I uh, looked already at the other two, the attributive and predicative usages. Some great news for you today. This is the easiest form uh, in which adjectives are used in New Testament Greek, um, and it is the one found it's in section 5.6 in Duff's book on page 59 and 60. The attributive use of the adjective will be very familiar to you if you've ever seen a sentence, which I'm sure you have all seen, a sentence a little bit like this. The good, the bad and the ugly. Notice please what's happened here. In this instance we've taken a word like good, which is an adjective, and we've you turned it into a noun the mem the uh, which is defined by its possession of this quality, the good. So in this case, it means the good people or the good things or the good person, perhaps. And the way we've done that is simply by adding, oh, that pen's dying, isn't it? Let's ditch that. I think we can probably afford another buyer, another felt pen, can't we? The, we've turned an adjective into a noun by the simple addition of the definite article, the good. Very straightforward. Now, exactly the same thing happens in Greek. Let me show you. Let's get an uh, adjective like this. Agathos, which of course means good. How would we write the phrase meaning the good in the sense of the good things or the good people? Well, we write it like this. Ho agathos means, actually it doesn't mean the good things, come to that in a second. Ho agathos means literally the good. In this case, however, because it's masculine and singular, it means the good man or the good person or conceivably the good one. It's masculine and so it refers to a man or as you've come, uh, got used to this now in ancient Greek and in um, other ancient languages and actually until quite recently, the masculine gender was used in general to refer not just specifically to men, but also to, to um, uh, men and women uh, broadly, especially when they're in a plural group. So this could mean the good person or the good one. And that might not be your preference to use the masculine gender in that way in your own writing, but we do have to get used to how the ancients wrote and that's what they did here. Now, so that's what um, that's how the simple way of translating um, the good into Greek. Let's now just uh, reflect on what happens when we change the gender or we change the number or we change the case of this phrase. Well, gender first. We've remarked already that the masculine gender is used in this way, either to refer specifically to a man or in plural cases, or in a second, to refer to people. That means then that if you do use the other genders, you're making a specific point by doing so. So, for example, hair agathe would very definitely refer specifically to the good woman, not the good person in general. This would have to mean the good woman. And uh, similarly, I hinted at this earlier, if you uh, went into the neuter, to aga Thon, to agathon, that would mean the good thing, because it's neuter, it's not uh, masculine or feminine, and therefore refer to an inanimate thing, or perhaps an animal, or something like that. So, hi agathos, the good man or person, he agathe, the good woman, and to agathon, uh, the good thing. Now, that's gender. What about um, case and number? Well, case is very straightforward. If this is anything other than the subject of a sentence, you change the case accordingly. So if it were the object, let's just take a random example. If it were the object, then we would change hot agathos to ton agathon if it were in the singular. And you do the same, you can see how all the declensions work through in the articles and the adjectives for feminine and neuter. So gender, case, what about number? Well, here it's pretty predictable as well. I don't know where that's put. How about putting it as part of the same word? There we are. If it were a plural group, 
like the good people rather than the good man or the good person, then again, very predictably, hoi, aga, thoi. In other words, we just exploit the fact that Greek articles and adjectives decline for number as well as gender and case. And this then very efficiently and neatly means the good people, the good things would be ta, agatha, and so on and so forth. So that should all be fairly clear. It's a very neat, efficient way of referring to categories of people and things by defining them according to the quality that they have represented by this adjective. You get um, something like this, for example, in the, the, the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the pure in heart, and so on and so forth. There our Lord Jesus is using this kind of construction to define a category of people. The attributive use of adjectives. Pretty straightforward, I hope you'd agree. So keep working at it. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, 5 or 6 days a week, and we will have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. God bless, and see you next time. Bye for now.